there is a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Robert Nesta Marley was a Jamaican reggae singer, songwriter, musician, and guitarist who attained international fame. He started out with a group called The Whalers in 1963. Marley would create a unique sound that would enthrall people all around the world for years to come. The Whalers would release some of the earliest reggae records in conjunction with producer Lee Scratch Perry. The Whalers disbanded in 1974, and Marley went on to pursue a solo career. The release of his album Exodus in 1977 would firmly cement his worldwide reputation as one of the world's best-selling artists of all time. Marley's album sold over 75 million albums and singles. Like many rasters, Bob Marley talks in a thick Jamaican patois, which at times is difficult to understand. He starts out talking about reggae music. Yeah, Jamaican people play it. Yeah, it's like musicians from Jamaica play that music, you know? And like musicians from, um, you might find black musicians from America play the funk or blues, you know? And people only play reggae music. Can it, can it be copied quite successfully outside of Jamaica? Well, you see, where I feel about the music, it can be copied, you know? But it's not copied to it, it's the feel. You know, it carry a feel where if you ask plenty musician, them know it, but them can't do it. So people still searching for this truth here, which this reggae music, you know, bring cross to them. And the only, the only purpose it serves is to tell the people about Rastafari. Did you, did you always intend being just a reggae musician or had you played rock music and, and soul music before? In our sense, we really listen to a lot of music, you know? I mean, the first time, just to listen to music that play on the radio. Not that we couldn't afford to buy records, so we listen to the radio. And anything the radio play is that we hear. So I was really into them thing. I was really into, like, you know, call it, spiritual music, you know, to it get more revolutionized, you know. How long have you been a Rasta? Well, I've been a Rasta from ever since, you know, but it's not how long I've been a Rasta, it's how long it takes to grow up, because what is is what is. From beginning to the end, you can never change because if you even adapt things later out, you can filter right out. So we're just Rasta from creation, you know. It's not an easy thing to explain in an educated standard that we are. Still, you have people who can do it. But it's a common sense, man. That means when we explain things, we explain it in a very simple way. That means if I explain it to a baby, the baby will understand too, you know. So we were saying now, like the Bible. The Bible say, God same shall return as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the conqueror line of a tribe of Judah. And him shall come in a new name. And this new name shall be dreadful among the heathen. How important are the dreadlocks? This? Is that this part is my of being identity, a Rasta? Man. Yeah, this is my identity. Do you, do you have to have dreadlocks if you're a Rasta? But if he's a Rasta, then you wouldn't say, why you shouldn't have it? Because then you don't know freedom is freedom, and you don't have to bow, you do whatever you like. But it's not a thing to say, well, I would, I would like to be a Rasta, but I wouldn't like to have this. You dig? Mm. It can't be a thing like that. It has to be a fullness where you yourself know that it's God creator, and I don't want no life, no obligation. That means he's your own man. That's the first time you own yourself. You do what you want to do. Anything people want to say about you, you don't care because, you know what I mean? Even them who say it, still have a comeback, you see them have to do the same. Perhaps the most controversial aspect of Rastafarianism is the use of marijuana as a central part of the philosophy. 
Officially named ganja, it's colloquially described by the rasters as herb. And Bob Marley is said to smoke a pound a week. It's outlawed in Jamaica, and a convicted smoker can expect an 18-month jail sentence. The more you accept herb, is the more you accept Rastafari. You dig what I say? We who accept herb, herb is not herb is important, but herb is more important to the people who don't accept it yet because that is a reality. I mean, it's not selling um um selling is something that you crave, but you check it in your sense and say, herb, herb is a plant. I mean. Herbs are good for everything. Why, why these people who want to do so much good for everyone, who call themselves governments and this and that, why them say you must not use the herb? You see, and we check that and we can't find, we just see them just say, no, you must use it, you must use it because it make you rebel. Against what? Against men who won't crave because them crave for the things like several and them have some material things and them want to captivate your mind and tell you say, well you have to work and put your pension and him keep it all. So herb make you look by yourself and instead of you want to work for the man, you want you want you want for you want to be one of the man too. Not in the sense of how he is, but in the sense of why should you have to bow to these things. Do you have to smoke to be a raster? No, man. But, in this time, I mean like, for instance, you're reaching a sense where you're, you're strong enough, you can take a little smoke, so when all them car pass, although you live in the city, you don't hear it because you're thinking. Differently if you just live so. Then, you know what I mean, you, the whole world confuses you and you're worried and you don't have no time to think. And herb, herb is a thing that gives you a little time for yourself so you can live, if you use it. What about alcohol? Alcohol makes you drunk, man. It don't make you meditate, it just makes you drunk. When you drink alcohol, you don't meditate. You're more get headed. Herb is more a consciousness. It must create problems for you, though, when you go different parts of the world where perhaps it's outlawed, as it were. Well, it's just like what we're saying is that I don't care. This is the people who make it out law, it's but a few. Majority of the people from the hurt want it. And it's just a few because guns and prisons and bad life treat you bad. So people kinda But we want some people power. And the only people power is Rastafari. Right? Essentially, Marley's a quiet man. A difficult man to reach because he's got no interest in the hype vibe which preoccupies so many rock stars. He upset many New Zealand journalists by refusing interviews. Not because of a sudden whim, but because really he isn't interested in that type of thing. Media. You see, if I run a newspaper, I would do a lot of interviews because what I wanted to say would get it across. But when I talk to someone who have to go to someone and then I'm headed it for fit up their business and if it's too if it's too militant, them try to spread a type of propaganda. I mean media, you know the media, you know media is a different game. Media is a media control. You were badly hurt once because of what seemed to be some sort of political type shooting in your home country, Jamaica. Do, 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 you, do you see dabbling in politics a good idea for someone in your position? Well, is it dabbling in politics? I don't know what that is. You see, stand up and talk for my rights. I know what that is. See? And I don't care who the guy is. 
Because my right is my right, like my life. You know, all I have is my life. That means if I can say, I don't want that or I don't want this. When I check it out, the biggest man was a baby one time. So I don't know where he get all of these big ideas want to be rulers over people. You see? And help enforce devilism. <laughs> Can't dig it. Can't take it. A rebel man. A <laughs> revolutionaries. You know? Is that the way you, you'd see yourself? Yeah, you see myself as a revolutionary. Who don't have no help and not take no bribe from no one to fight it single handed with music. Rasta is the future. See? <laughs> yes. Rasta is the future. See. The move to Trenchtown would prove to be rather fortunate, as Marley soon found himself in a vocal group with Bunny Whaler, Peter Tosh, Beverly Kelso, and Junior Braithwaite. Joe Higgs, part of the successful vocal act Higgs and Wilson, lived on 3rd Street, and his singing partner, Roy Wilson, had been raised by the grandmother of Junior Braithwaite. Higgs and Wilson would often rehearse at the back of the houses between 2nd and 3rd Streets, and it was not long before Marley, now living on 2nd Street, and his new group were gathering around the successful duo. Marley, nor any of the others, played instruments at this time, and were much more interested in being a vocal harmony group. Higgs was happy to help them work on developing their vocal harmonies, but more importantly, he started teaching Marley how to play guitar, creating the bedrock which would later allow Marley to construct some of the biggest-selling reggae songs in the history of the genre. Reggae music was born in the poverty and filth of the slums of Kingston, Jamaica, in the 1960s. But over the past decade, it's become the rallying cry of the not-so-beautiful Jamaicans, the street people, the dirt poor, the derelicts, the hustlers and the pushers. It's also about the Rastafarians, strange worshippers of Rastafari, their name for Haile Selassie, the former emperor of Ethiopia. Urged on by the reggae beat, the Rastas dream through a marijuana haze of a return to their ancestral Africa. Reggae and reggae bands like Bob Marley and the Wailers have become a musical rage throughout the world. But to many in the Caribbean, reggae is the sound of revolution. There are 75,000 Rasta men in Jamaica. They're easily recognized. They don't cut their hair and wear it in long pigtails called dreadlocks. They all say they're religious and worship the dead emperor of Abyssinia, Haile Selassie, as Jah, God. And through their marijuana haze, they dream of going back to Africa. For what we're about to receive, we give thee thanks, O Jah, Rastafari. Fire, 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 fire. Marijuana is illegal in Jamaica, but the Rastas say they smoke it because the Bible tells them to. The book of Revelation says to partake of the herd. This is one reason reggae music scares the hell out of a lot of people in Jamaica. This is another reason reggae is rebel music. Bob Marley himself. Bob, how important is uh, is the ganja to arrest this, the man? Ganja is a bird. This is herb. Herb. Is it, does it matter to you that it's it's still uh, against the law here in Jamaica? Every law is illegal. Every law is illegal. Every government upon the face of this earth today is illegal. Not one of them is legal. Since independence in 1962, Jamaica has been plagued by vicious urban crime. 
only a few years back in the mid-70s. What seemed to be mindless killing was so widespread, police gave up keeping a record of the number of people being murdered. By 1974, street violence and shootings were so rampant that the Manly government felt obliged to introduce some very tough anti-gun laws. And any Jamaican found with a firearm in his possession wound up at this place, what became known as the Notorious Gun Court. And it's a pretty awesome looking deterrent. And even today, some five years later, there are still about 120 men inside that place. Hey man, what are you doing? Do you think any of the rusters have been involved in the killings in Jamaica over the years, or that's somebody else? Rasta is involved in progress, in making understanding that preaching traditional culture to be Rasta no killers. You have to do good before you can be a Rasta. You if have to do bad, good. If he's body, then you're bad. If he's goody, then you're good. What would I have to do to be a Rastafari? Well, the first need have to be born again. Born again? Yeah. Would I have to be black? Do you have a choice? If no, you have I a don't. choice, you better be black if you have a choice. But well, if you don't have a choice, come on, what God said, yeah, right? where reggae was born in the 60s to become the rallying cry of the dirt poor. Not the harmless lilting calypso of Harry Belafonte, but a menacing new sound threatening to tear apart the island in the sun. Marley and other reggae superstars, people like Jimmy Cliff, Burning Spear and Peter Tosh have taken the revolutionary music of the offbeat Rastafarian religious cult and turned it into the biggest change in Western pop music since the Beatles. The Rastas want to take two million poor Jamaicans back home to Africa for a handful of Rastas riding on the wave of reggae popularity. It's not so much back to Africa, but back to the bank. Bob, is, is the, is the merit message of Rastafari that you should go back to Africa? Yes, and that the earth must rule by Africa. Forward. One government. Forward, not back, forward. Yeah, go forward to Africa, yes. not back. Mm -mm. Do you think that will ever happen? Do you really believe that will happen? Yeah. Even if the gunja-smoking Mali ripped out of his head most of the day seems hard to take seriously, there are Jamaicans, like journalist Colin Campbell, who don't write him off. In terms of the words which come out of Bob Marley's music, in, in his lyrics, I think he's most definitely a leader. He, he is a leader in terms of the voice of the ghetto. But a folk hero, nevertheless. Most definitely, he is. And probably the greatest contemporary folk hero studio one as we welcome our friends from Australia our brothers George Vernon Gordon and Peter okay from Channel 9 now at 10 to 11 o'clock before we get to Turf Gang at 11 we're gonna bring on the kids international year of the child the melody makers from Turf Gang children of Marley and these children are playing in the streets I served and observed by those looking on. 10 to 11 o'clock. Children play in the streets. On broken bottles and rubbish heap. Another little baby got nothing to eat. Oh, Lord. In the game. Yeah, keep sitting in 
90% of Jamaicans are black and 90% of Jamaicans are poor. And they're the same people. This is the only place these kids have got to play, on the street. They live in this area, it's called Trenchtown. It's in the western suburbs of Kingston, the capital. And somebody once quaintly called this area a human garbage tip. Well, being here and seeing how the people live, it's certainly easy to see why Trenchtown doesn't make it out of the travel brochure. Bob Marley was born in Trenchtown. He told us not to go there alone, said we needed security, what we would call protection money. A bunch of Marley's friends wanted a thousand dollars to take us into the ghetto. Local police told us it was dangerous and wouldn't guarantee our safety. We took a chance and were lucky. We met these men, former Trenchtown gunmen, street fighters who wanted us to film the filth they live in. What about the kids? They well, get the, most tough too. the most important thing is the kids. Because all they do is play on the streets? Yeah. So l just look at the kids, right? Most of these kids here don't have no home for themselves right yeah. now. They don't have homes? No. They got, they, I mean, like, they're in a, a rented, they live in a rented place right now. Yeah. Yeah. Jamaican poverty is violent poverty. And the dirt poor in Trenchtown often have nothing to do but fight, usually among themselves. You notice all the buildings here are burnt out and... Yeah. What, there used to be buildings here? Yeah. yeah. What you call to a fighting. Yeah. Like yeah, bad we, fighting? We yeah, have a fire burn for about a week, don't we? Uh, people get yeah. killed? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people yeah, get killed. Yeah, dead too. Yeah, how many people get killed when you're fighting? Because well, you well, I'd say, I'd put it at estimate about 700 and something people die. In, you know, in what, in, in about in the, six in, years? Yeah. In the, in the politics. What were they fighting for? Well, we don't know. Some... well nobody knew what the fight was about. I really don't know. No, no, we just... It's, it was politics. Why did, did, it, why did it stop? Well, it was a peace. A peace truce? Yeah. Yeah, the two sides call a peace truce, yeah. like, and yeah. reason it out, and we had some, some music, music and... going on for about three months, and we get ourselves together. The music's and... pretty important. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like that, reggae music. And... Reggae music's pretty important. Yeah. 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 But the, you're saying that the reggae music helps you to come to a peace truce? Yeah. yeah. Well, I tell you, roughly about five, six years, I never went down there. And now? Yeah, if I want. I wouldn't go down there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Not taking any chances. No. <laughs> well, I'm survivors. Yes, the black survivors. But today, reggae comes not out of the filth of Trenchtown, but from here, Island House, Bob Marley's headquarters in Kingston's dress circle. These days, Marley and the Whalers are surviving nicely. From recording in tin shacks, to this sophisticated studio. The Gunja heads have also become business heads. Some Jamaicans think stars like Marley have sold out, that the music of the slum people has merely become music to the ears of the world's white pop promoters. But Bob reckons BMW stands for Bob Marley and the Whalers. Have you made a lot of money out of your music? Money. I mean, what is how much is how much is a lot of money to you? Yeah, that's a good question. Have Have you made, say, millions of dollars? No. Are you a rich man? When you mean rich, what do you mean? Do you have a lot of possessions, a lot of money in the bank. Possession make you rich. I don't. I don't have that type of richness. My richness is life forever. Yeah, yeah. Even though the temptation is to laugh at a stoned Jamaican musician who worships a dead Ethiopian dictator, Bob Marley's view of the plight of the black man is hard to knock. The black survivors. We're the survivors. A good man is never a survivor. It is no young change. Survivor. Nothing change. Nothing strange. Survivor. Nothing change. Nothing change. Bob Marley signed with CBS Records in London in 1972 and set off on a UK tour with the American soul singer Johnny Nash. While in London, the Whalers asked their road manager Brent Clark to introduce them to Chris Blackwell, who had licensed some of their Coxone releases for his Island Records. 
The whalers had intended to talk over their royalties associated with these releases, but the meeting instead resulted in the offer of an advance of £4,000 to record an album. Since Island's top reggae star Jimmy Cliff had left the label not too long ago, Blackwell was interested in finding a replacement. In Marley, Blackwell recognized what was needed to snare the rock audience. I was dealing with rock music, which was really rebel music. I felt that would really be the way to break Jamaican music. But you needed someone who could be that image. When Bob walked in, he really was that image. The Whalers returned to Jamaica to record at Harry J's in Kingston, resulting in the album Catch a Fire. In 1975, Marley had his international breakthrough with his first hit outside of Jamaica with No Woman, No Cry from the Natty Dread album. This was followed by his breakthrough album in the United States, Rastaman Vibration, in 1976, which reached the top 50 of the Billboard Soul Charts. Smile Jamaica was a free concert set up by the Jamaican Prime Minister Michael Manley. It was done in an effort to ease tension between two warring political groups. On December 3, 1976, two days before the concert, Marley, his wife, and manager Don Taylor were injured in an assault by an unidentified gunman inside Marley's home. Taylor and Marley's wife received serious injuries but would make a full recovery. Marley received minor wounds in his chest and arm. The murder attempt was thought to have been politically motivated, since many people felt that the concert was actually a support rally for Marley. Despite this, however, the concert went on, and with an injured Marley performing as scheduled. I'm pleased to have you as a guest on Like It Is. Thank you. How did it all start? Had music always been a part of your life from when you were a little boy? Yeah, you know, growing up musical family, grandfather, mother, uncle, sister, pit, and everything. <laughs> <laughs> what part of Jamaica? Um, St. Anne's, you know. Yeah? That's in the country. What town? Uh, a town called Rodnard. It's not well known, you know. It's a, a little place up in the hills, you know. Yeah. Um, how big is your family? Well, my family is really big family, you know, Malcolm. The family name is Malcolm. It's a plenty. That's a good name. Yeah. <laughs> when did you begin to get involved in music, really? About 1958. Doing what? Well, we were always interested in music, but that time I was learning trade, you know, and meet up some guys who can sing. One named Desmond Decker. And so we started out from kind of rehearse together and thing, you know. And then one day we went away, did some recording. Then I fell after. Mm -hmm. You weren't doing the same kind of things then that you're doing now. What kind of music was it in the beginning? Uh, that music was ska. Ska? Ska music, yeah. yeah. How does ska differ from, from reggae? Ska is different, different in sound, different in style, different playing, you know. Mm -hmm. Ska is a more quicker music mm -hmm. than reggae. No relation? Yeah, it's almost the same music breakdown to go much slower, you know. Uh -huh. Same route? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's almost the same music, Ska. But I want to say now, if it was playing at, um, at 33, it started playing at seven and a half, you know. I hear it more. That's a good analogy. Uh, how, how does reggae and ska come out of Calypso? Many people ask that. Yeah, because the uh, Calypso was always there first. Right. You know? And then now, uh, when the musician in Jamaica started to play, a lot of them can play Calypso too, because they play a lot of Calypso. Mm -hmm. But because uh, the American influence music come past you down there, you know? them start to kind of get more to them time you saw Fats Domino. Yes. And plenty of them type of people. So after a while now the music start drift from the reggae. So it used to be a, a music almost like a, like a half blues. And used to play before mm. the sketch start, you know. Even people like Joe X. You know that music. Right. Music play that plenty. 
Uh -huh. So um, from there now it developed to people start ching, 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 for ska, you know. And then for um, rock studies like ching, 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 for reggae now it's ching, 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 you know. So you have three different fields. But the three of them can put together again and make one thing still. Now, Calypso music, most of it, dealt with family and folk stories and love and beautiful island in the sun, things Sin. like that. How did it move into what we're getting in the music now where we have message? Because during that time of this um, Calypso and um, thing, people never wasn't so conscious about Africa and where them roots come from. Mm. Since the reggae come now, people get, I mean, not from a point of music, because music is always conscious. But since the reggae come now, the reggae start talking about Africa, blackness, you know, in a militant way. So that is how it kind of, that is how the lyrics differ from the oil and in the sun. Well, who are some of your influences? Well, I think my biggest influence is Marcus Garvey, I'll say. Yeah. Sure. From uh, what you heard coming up as a boy about Garvey, or what you've learned now that you've grown, or what? Um, what we hear, what we read, you know, and what we, what we know, know about him. Did you learn much about Garvey in school? No, no. Nah, nah. nah. yeah. Yes, them don't teach. It's education that we don't get in school, you know. We don't get that type of education that when we grow up we can know who we is. Mm -hmm. We get a more education that we might know who Christopher Columbus is, or who Marco Polo is, you know. But we never really know who Marcus Garvey is, who Elias Selassie is, or who any black man is. Were you born as a Rasta? Oh, how did that evolve? Well, where I figured out, I was born, you know, and then born and uh, growing. There was a certain amount of consciousness in you know, myself that, you know, it was always a lonely world, not finding people who might think like me, you know? Yeah. Not, 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 not to say that I think so different, but because and this consciousness about God and the people we come from is more Christian, you know. We always try to do, like, try to stand up not right. But what we used to find out now that one church quarreling against the next church, and I figure I never want any of that, you know. I never want really enter anything where this one I fight against that one and everybody talking about God still. So after going on and going on and coming up, you know, the the, the thing that was there, get more stronger, come to Kingston, meet some more people, them people is Rasta. You talk to them and find out, it's the same thing we have inside. It's the same thing. How old were you when this started to happen? This is about 17, 18, you know. Uh -huh. I find out that's the same thing where I deal with, it's the same thing where the Rasta man talk about. So that is how I could identify myself as a Rasta. By nope. not changing, you know. Now, what happened when you went back home and told your, your family what you had found? Oh, I never have a home to go back to. No? No. Where are you from? Everybody gone, you know. Uh-huh. Everybody gone. Everybody living in America, some living in Kingston, everybody gone. So, never really have a home, not that much, although we used to have a home before grandfather died, you know. But after grandfather died, everything gets crashed. So, I know so you came to Kingston, and that's where it began to happen. Yeah. Where did you live in Kingston? What part? Um, east. I call it East Kingston. Mm -hmm. Out near the east. Yeah. And then we go up, up a place there, Oxford Street, you know, down to Spanish Stone Road, down to Trent, then up to Trench Town. Yes. So, for a long time, things were kind of lean. Well, yes, things was kind of lean as can. It lived to what is your expectation and your do, you know? To me, it was, it was lean, but I could understand it, because coming from the country, 
where you learn to do things like you don't learn to depend on family and all of that, you know. You go out and you plant your own corn and you watch the corn grow. When corn grow, you pick your own corn, you know what I mean? Yes. All of them fruits from them tree, you can get them, you know? So... It's a little different, though, in town. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you've got to do different things to eat, eh? <laughs> well, when you're in the city, it's a whole different ball game, you know? Right. People have to go to work, catch the bus. You know, the country all the day, you go for the donkey, and you ride the donkey to the farm, and you're cool, you know? Right. You know, the city, people also catch the bus, go to work, get a her, come back home, <laughs> you know? So it was a different thing up there. I know a little bit about Jamaica, and I understand in Kingston, Trenchtown is a rough part of town. How did you survive? Well, while living in Trenchtown, you know, um, as a young man, surviving was easy. The only thing that I really look out for was the police, you know. Because the police could have just get you, free you, you go to prison, and because you come from Trenchtown, you know, trench towns. From them say, where you from? It's a trench town. You're gone. You know, what I mean? <laughs> you get shipped out. You know, a lot of people are confused about what a Rasta really is and have a very negative image of the Rasta. Tell us what a Rasta is. See, Christ promised that he will return within two thousand years. You know, mm -hmm. and him said, when him come, him will be the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the conqueror and the Lion of Judah through the lineage of King Solomon and King David. Now, my life has great meaning to me. So I really search to find out if God is here. When I search, I look, I look in Ethiopia. I look all about, look in Germany, you know, because I'm not prejudiced. Me look for God. I look in Ethiopia, I see one man stand up with these name, Emperor I the last year, name, King of Kings, Lord of Lord, conquering land of Judah, through the lineage of King Solomon and King David, written in the Bible. Uh, one of my things is that um, the Bible, let me say that King James edited the Bible. Now, my understanding is that if King James edited the Bible, I don't think he would edit it for the benefit of black people. So when the revelation turned out that Isla Selassie is the king of kings and the lord of lords, coming straight through the lineage of King Solomon and King David, then, you know, we really know that this is the Christ's return. Because we know in this world, yeah, when the white man, when the white man edited it, he wouldn't edit it in our behalf. You know, he would have more edited to make it look like England going to be the, the big, big thing. But in the last days, they'll prove out that is the is Ethiopia, Isla Selassie, you know. And Isla Selassie's name is Rasta. So we are called Rasta, you know, called by his name. Uh -huh. And then, we, it's a lot of things. We go as far as saying, him say, when I return and you call upon him, now this is God, him say, when I return and you call upon him, your mother and your father will forsake you. Now, we know that if you call upon the Catholics, you, you, they embrace you. You call upon the church of God, they embrace you. Any religion you call upon, you might get embraced. The only religion they push you off from is, is Rasta. But that does make the truth more, more real because they say, when you call upon my name, your mother and your father will forsake you. And that is why today you hear Rasta get so much bad name. It's not because Rasta do anything bad, but it's because all the prophecy go with it. When you, if, if your mother and your father will forsake you, just imagine people who don't even know you. You know what I mean? Well, in most religions, uh, you go to church on Sunday, and you may go to a Bible class once or twice during the week, True. and that's it. Yeah. Is it pretty much basically the same in Rasta, or is it more involved? No, well, we, say no we say that the man is a church. Uh, the Bible is there. But what we find out now is that a lot of people read the Bible, but they don't understand the Bible because the approach to the Bible is wrong. I mean, there's no way you can read a book. You just take up a book and just read it in the middle and figure you can find out what was happening from the beginning to the middle. The, the, the Bible is a whole book with a, with a whole tradition in it. And from them read to Genesis to Revelation, the whole truth and the whole straight road.
the wolf are standing, it's there. You know, so it's not a several then we just go um, go church and do like the other Christian. We know that the man is a church, you know. Because, see, you just can't overthrow the truth, you know. We, our people, have our roots. When we search for it, we find it in a rasta. Because it, we don't see, there's no other way, we don't see no other way. It's rasta, we find the roots, you know. You know? How do you handle fame? I am a fame by not being famous. Come on, you know you're a famous man. No, I mean, you know, not to me. No? Not famous to me. <laughs> Some people get drunk off of fame. See, I learned, I learned from, from <coughs> he was coming in, from I just started music. You know, the people them warned me. Them sure me say, hey, this game is a game where if you don't mind sharp, you lose your consciousness. So, the only way you can lose your consciousness is because if you figure, say, you're, you're getting, some people say, Ray, you might, your head might get swell. Right. And if your head swell, that's it. So, you know, we really don't keep my head in a bandage that it can't swell. <laughs> <laughs> True. How do you handle the women? They come at you in droves. I, people have visions of women beating down the door to get at Bob Jeez. Marley and grabbing <laughs> clothes. Is it like that? No. No? No. I'm uneasy, you know. <laughs> Is it difficult, though, to keep your balance and not, you know, get to feeling that you're more important than you really are when so many people are after you all the time for different things? No, you see, I don't think, I, I never really check myself, you know, I really, I know I am benefit to the people, you know, that's the only consciousness I have of myself, that I can be beneficial to a people, you know, and I don't really, I don't know anything else, I don't know that. What do you think it is that has made Bob Marley such a big name? I think, you know, maybe it's just what Bob Marley stands for. What is that? The truth. And the determination to stay alive and survive. You know? You have a record out called Survival. Yeah. That was last year. Yeah. Was anything, did anything happen to you that caused you to write that? Well, 1976, I'm shoot off from the right. Yes. And I figured that was survival, you know. Yeah. What happened when you were shot? You were in your home. Yeah. Was it in the morning or at night or what happened? Well, it was about, um, well, I said about 9 o'clock in the night. Yeah. What happened is that um, the night before, about three nights before that, I, I was living at a place called Pool B, you know. Mm. And I went to about 3 o'clock in the morning. And get a, and get some sleep, and then I vision I was in a lot of gunshot, you know. That was that was a, a dream. I was in a, a, a barrage, a gunshot, and but when when, when it all over, you know, it's like me never really get no shot, but me see my mother get shot. You know the vision show my mother get shot in her head, and what happened is that the vision said don't run, you know. It's like. Do you know that this gunshot is like something that the vision said, don't run, stand up. So when the gunshot started firing a hope road, the first thing come back to my mind was the vision. And all I could remember is that the vision said, don't run. And so me have to stand up, you know. And, you know, them fire fire until it was a tired of fire and then two is, is, is not really a laughable gun battle. Man start to run and it ease up, you know. And Where were you hit? Eh? Where were you hit? Me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Went right through? What just No, I said lodge inside there. Eh? Yeah? Yeah. You never saw the gunman? Well, at that time, no. But you know who did it? 
They ever know that. Were they caught? No, but I don't call the police. Mm. It's just, you know, one thing. You have a record company now? Yeah. Why? Oh, you know, a long time we always have a record company. What we have now is a record in studio. When we go into the studio to work, it was a lot of hassle. I mean, we're a rasta, you know? Some people don't want to rust in them studio. No, if you stop all of this, you have to make one. Because, you know what I mean? A man might say, don't you say, I'll sell us your God. Well, you know what I mean? Go and build your own studio. You know what I mean? So, all right, I'll sell us this God, and we'll go and build a studio, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I just said, go. It just, it, them things come through sabotage and through pressure. If everything was nice, maybe we wouldn't have to build a studio. But, you know, it, it's just a tricky place. It's not everyone really have that humanitarian feeling. Some people just are deal with, them don't even know what they're dealing with. Mm. What's ahead for Bob Marley, do you know? Do you have an agenda or a master plan? Well, I feel ahead for I and I is the unity of Africa. And then when the unity of Africa come, then people will really understand, say, you know, there was something in this thing. Ah, there is something in it. Do you think of yourself more as an African than a Jamaican? Yeah. Because one of the main things is that we're Rasta. From you accept Rasta, you become a Ethiopian, which is Africa. Next thing again, the history of Jamaica shows that the Arawak Indian was living there and it belonged to the Arawak Indian. Now, our history shows that through slave business, black people come out of the West and thing, you know? So we still figure, say, Africa is a route, you know? And this is where we must return to. What do you see as most of uh, Africa's problems as far as uniting, I mean? I see Africa's problem is that outside people keep on fatiguing the people, you know, and make them can't really get them things together, you know. If it's not this superpower, it's that superpower. But Africa is only a place which part of music plight, you know. Nobody not really. Africa, Africa so rich that it, it become a man who's going to Africa, steal out where he wants, steal and carry back in a theme country. And Africa stayed alike, you know. Go Africa ready. Af uh, Garvey used to say, Africa for the Africans. Is that how you feel? Yeah, Africa for Africans, a woman abroad, you know. True. <laughs> will, your, will your home base, though, always be Jamaica? Or someday do you, would, no, would you like to live in Africa? No, someday going to be in Africa. Yeah. Maybe we open a Jerusalem. You know what I mean? Let them Bible land. And what do you think lies ahead for Jamaica? I think what lies ahead for Jamaica is that Jamaica is a beautiful island. The best thing Jamaica could have been is just like how Jamaica, like how England owned Jamaica. Jamaica must make some part of Africa own Jamaica. You know what I mean? And it worked more nicer. I mean, you know. But if, if it's going to be a thing which by you have always have a, going to have a war. Because the only solution is either them get themselves with Nigeria or with someone, you know what I mean? But make Jamaica become some African, something to do with Africa, that Africa who in Jamaica, you know? But because the people and them will be ideology and philosophy where they want to come with, you know? Some people want to be Marxist, some want to be this, some want to be that. And nobody would own, and plenty of people don't want to be with them is. And where them is is Africa and, and Africa have its own culture and its own people. And you know, all it needs is people who keep it down for either die out of the earth or something. What is your uh, feeling about the condition of black people here in the United States? I feel like the black people shall develop themselves, you know, not, in a, not, not to several then this developing of yourself having a prejudice thing to it. 
It's just that we are people with our own history and culture. We can educate ourselves. I mean, we are the first creators. So we have to really, everything we you see on this earth here, yeah, the black man make it. And, I, and I'm saying that the white man don't make some, but all wisdom come from the black man. You know, a lot of young viewers look up to you and are going to want to hang on every word and every syllable. Do you have a message for young people? Well, you know, the whole thing again is to really check out the truth of Rasta and don't make like fallism. Don't make it check it out. And don't get too busy that you can't check out the truth. Because the truth is there. And Africa awaits its creators. And we know that the people in the West, Edwise, it's them ready, you know? It's them have to learn, come learn. What I'm learning in the West, they have to carry it home to them people, make it be a benefit to the people. Because, I mean, how long must the black people suffer? And these are people. You know? And then we have our own culture, we have everything. We don't shout at anything. We have everything. Plus we have a land that no one is living there. And we must go home to it. And when you go home, you can build all of these big buildings if you want. I mean, if you miss a city, build a city. You know what I mean? If you want a car, you can get a car. I mean, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see the big thing. One time America was, was you know what I mean? Maybe used to have, that's how all, 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 where I call it, all sort of thing I walk through. Africa is a peaceful place. Then we want to fool black people, but it's a jungle and blah, blah, mm -hmm. boom, boom. Where have you been in Africa besides Ethiopia? Zimbabwe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Gabon. How did Zimbabwe strike you? Well, you know, Zimbabwe nice, man. Zimbabwe is really nice. I mean, you know, it's like a paradise in a, in a, in a, in a, in a place. You know, when you go in and see it, beautiful. How did the people react to you? People is great. Yeah, people good. You know, them places, when you go and you see how the people, in, how the land set up, you see people living. You see a man having most on a nice piece. And then the whole thing about it, the climate, you can go out all the while. <laughs> You know, I mean, climate nice outside. Yeah. If you want to look upon a few lions and things, you can walk and go. And if you want to see some things that man never make, but it look like somebody make it, that's all Zimbabwe too. Because I go in a place and I see some stone farm, where I know it's not the man make it, but the weed farm, you know, is, is higher, than, higher than something. It's really been a pleasant and informative experience talking to you, Brother Marley. Nice. Thank I thank you. you for your time. I agree. Wish you well. Best During his life, Marley served as a world ambassador of sorts for reggae music. He was inducted posthumously into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1994. Marley also sold over 20 million records, making him the first superstar to emerge from the third world. To this day, decades after his death, Marley's music is still widely acclaimed. His family and friends have carried on his musical legacy with their own performances and music. His adopted sons from Rita's previous relationship went on to become Ziggy Marley and the Melody Makers and became famous in their own right. His record label is being run by other family members to this day. In addition, Marley's commitment to fight oppression is carried on through an organization that was created in his memory by his family. The Bob Marley Foundation focuses on helping people and organizations in developing countries. Bob Marley was an amazing man who made beautiful music and created a legacy that will endure for years to come.